Let me give you an overview of the project that we would recommend for a course like this. It consists of, first of all, thinking of a startup with a mission, objectives, and a business for good code. It's very important to think of one's own startup because then you take ownership. Even if you think of your project in the context of a large company, it's important to think about your startup as an autonomous unit within that company. You take ownership, you create it as well. Now the startup itself is going to be created iteratively. It's not like you sit down and say, this is the startup. There are a number of distinct parts to the project. There is the problem or opportunity, the solution, its implementation, and the sustainable outcomes, which can then lead to your investment request. Now let's take a look at each part. The problem or opportunity relates to the need, the geography, the beneficiary or customer, and the usage situation. Let's start with the need. The need has to be unpacked because we are talking about people living in uncertainty whom we are unfamiliar about. So it's not enough to say, I'm gonna look at uh, providing educational supplies in schools. It's very important to think about the need in terms of what it is, what are the drivers of the need, what are the causes that make that need so stark, and what's the larger context and the elements in the larger context that lead to those drivers and that need. So in a sense, the drivers are the immediate causes of that need being stark, and the larger context elements are where all of this is playing out. Now, if you are designing for me, you don't have to go to such depth because you can assume what's around me. You know I have electricity. You know what I have and so on. You can assume my certainties. You can't do that when you're trying to understand a need for somebody who's very different from us, not only culturally, but socioeconomically. The difference socioeconomically can be wider than the difference across geographies. What you see with upper income Los Angeles and lower income Los Angeles is much wider sometimes than say looking horizontally between Los Angeles and Shanghai in terms of upper income and so on. So that's our whole philosophy. We want to look vertically and diagonally and challenge our students as well. So the need could be something like protecting against malaria carrying mosquitoes. And that's one of the examples we've played out and given you the content on. And there's another example where the need is for entrepreneurial education. So what are the drivers of these needs? What are the causes that make such uh, you know, a need so stark? Well, the lack of protective methods, the lack of money to be able to buy things, the lack of hygiene uh, in terms of you know, stagnant water and so on for the mosquito uh, prevention project. Uh, and what are the larger context elements? It could be poor governmental support, poor healthcare infrastructure, political instability, climate change. These are broader elements of the setting in which all of this is playing out. The same thing with entrepreneurial education. The need is stark, there are a number of drivers, there's no formal education. Uh, it's often, you know, let us say for adults who have not had the opportunity to get an education. Uh, it's a stark need because of the uh, uh, kind of education you're providing which can help people to survive. And what are the larger context elements? Well, there could be lack of internet connectivity, there could be you know, a lack of um, you know, educational infrastructure, and so on. So that's how you have to look at the problem or opportunity, unpack the need, and of course you select your geography, and that could be a, a country, it could be a rural part of a country, urban part of a country, you also think about who your beneficiary or customer is. Could it be pregnant women in Tanzania, for example? Uh, could it be farmers in Brazil? And so on. And you have to think about the usage situation where you're addressing the need, which also may evolve over time. And the idea here is, well, you're thinking about school supplies for after-school programs for primary school children in Honduras, say. Right? So these are some of the things to keep in mind when you think of the problem or opportunity. There is one general thing I want to say about projects like this. 
narrower is better. The narrower you are in the way you define the need and so on, in some sense, the deeper you can go. The narrower your geography, the deeper you can go. As long as you learn about a village and from there learn about a set of villages, you may be able to have a business that is viable as well. So narrower is often better in these kinds of settings. Let the need be articulated by you. Let these bottom-up approaches help you to define the need. When it comes to the solution, we talk about bottom-up immersion, just the broad methods that everybody is using, let us say, in these learning experiences, and you're learning from it. We talk about marketplace insights from very specific approaches such as virtual interviews, and you're learning from it. And then we want you to provide the product design in terms of generating a number of ideas and then choosing one of them and detailing out the product. A product could be tangible, a good, or an intangible, a service. So when it comes to detailing out, it is very important to draw out your product. You could draw out an interface for an app, you could draw out a service in the different steps involved, you could draw out a tangible product, and so on. Now it's very important to come up with a longer list of ideas before you narrow down to one or a combination. It's like looking at a menu before you select one particular item. Don't dismiss ideas. Just as you may find a unique way to articulate a need, you may find a unique way to solve a problem. Don't be too constraining in saying, oh, this would be too expensive and so on. You don't know that yet. You may find a way in step three to solve the issue of affordability for customers that you're not thinking of right now. So why rule out that idea? When it comes to implementation, we have a number of different steps. We have the sustainable value proposition. Bottom up, from the customer or beneficiary's perspective, what do they give? What do they get? They give more than money. They give time. They give effort. They give their trust. They give information. They get more than the product. They get a trusted relationship. They may get a warranty. Articulate the give and the get, not from your startup's perspective, but from the perspective of the customer or beneficiary. Another part relates to communicating the value proposition. Here, it's not enough to say we will use Facebook and we will use other methods. It's also important to provide the actual message and the vehicle of communication. That to us is bottom up. By providing the actual message, you have shown your understanding and you've translated your understanding to exactly how you'll communicate to the customer. It could be a, a script for a sales call. It could be an advertisement. It could be a flyer and so on. We also want you to lay out how you're going to deliver the product. This relates to how you're going to get the product in the hands of the customer, whether it's through sales reps or a shop and so on. In terms of competition, we want you to think about what's called a positioning map. And what that is is how the customer views your product in comparison to other products. So the first thing there is to identify important factors or dimensions on which you believe the customer is going to compare you. That means these are dimensions that are meaningful to the customer. They are not what you want to see and you think you're good at. They have to be meaningful to the customer. These are the reasons why they will end up buying your product or some other product. So this could be affordability, it could be sustainability, it could be accessibility, it could be convenience. The set of dimensions that make sense, you could even have a third dimension where you show uh, the magnitude based on the size of the products or something like that. In terms of the products themselves, remember to also compare yourself with doing nothing or making. Remember, subsistence customers have the resilience to either forego a product or to make it themselves, even if it's not a very effective product. You also have other alternatives in order to meet the same need that you should put on the positioning map. We also ask you to draw out the value chain, which is really about where 
the supplies and ingredients start off and how value is added. The value chain relates to how value is added in a chain of activities all the way from supplies and ingredients to say production and so on and getting into the hands of the customer as well as disposal. So it's the entire chain of value, it's the entire process by which something is conceived of, made, gets in the hands of the customer and then is disposed of as well. So that's the value chain. In terms of human resources, we want to know how you'll treat your people. Are there some unique programs you'll have for them and so on. Now the exchange model is very important. The exchange model is what makes this a business. And one of the things we say is avoid choosing large infrastructure projects, avoid creating a model for exchange where you have things like donations, subsidies, volunteers, and so on. We want you to challenge yourself by making this a pure business, not a charitable organization. That way you wrestle with the triple bottom line. So with the exchange model, what you need there are the larger entities, yourself, let us say the customer, let us say you're dealing with some entrepreneurs and so on, who are the larger entities? And we want to see arrows go in and out of each box. So every set of boxes that are connected will have an exchange or multiple exchanges. We particularly want to see an arrow go into your box, which is your startup, which has the money signed to it. It's very important that you have to make an income in order to be a business and to survive. So in terms of the exchange model, uh, these boxes are connected and we tend to discourage models which involve buying a product in an advanced economy and therefore donating one elsewhere. We want this to be a pure business which plays out in that marketplace. In terms of financials, we think of it bottom up and top down. Uh, and so you want to build up some very basics bottom up and then some aspects top down as well. And finally, we want you to show us the sustainable outcomes socially, environmentally, and economically. And we want you to make an investment request. Thank you.